So with my GS Adventure in at North Oxford Motorrad having the TFT software updated, I have been fortunate enough to be able to loan a couple of machines off them and I'm going to do some quick ride reviews, QRRs. Um, nothing in depth, nothing particularly technical, just trying to ride a couple of models that I've been looking to ride for a while and just giving you a live look at the features rather than just looking through the configurator. So fortunately this first ride is on the BMW R1250 GS 40th anniversary edition so it's not the adventure it's the standard GS and it's the homage to the 1981 original GS which was nicknamed the Bumblebee so it has very much a black and yellow colorway um, also with these nice gold handlebars now the 2021 models have a couple of very nice features additionally, a couple that personally I wouldn't necessarily use, but um, all the same uh, we'll, we'll run through those uh, one at a time. If we take this 40th anniversary edition, it comes with a dark screen, obviously it comes with the yellow colourway handguards here, and it also, if I look down, comes with the billet pack. So if you look down now on the boxer engine there, you can see it's the option 719 billet pack on the uh, cylinder cam covers. So I think that's normally about a £1,400 option. It, it, this is a more expensive bike than the GSTE in any other version, the triple black or in the uh, rally colours, but um, you do effectively get that option included in the machine. Now that's the specifically the 40th anniversary model differences, the sort of yellow and black colourways and the billet pack. What you do get as standard on the BMW R1250 GSTE, that's in the UK and Europe I think, I don't know about the rest of the world, but this machine now comes with the what I call the welcome headlight, so when you switch the machine on the headlight nods at you. Um, not quite sure what that is apart from a little bit of NAF marketing but all the same. It however probably more functionally comes with a uh, adaptive headlight. I think they call it adaptive. What that effectively means is I'm on a dead straight road here but if I had a right hand bend in front of me as I leant over around the bend and, and the lean angle sensors realize you're going in that direction the headlight will then turn in that direction to give you a much better visibility of the road now personally i don't do an awful lot of riding at night i mean most of my riding is for pleasure and by darkness i'm normally in the pub but um certainly if you are riding your bike in earnest i'm sure that that's a very very good feature it's been on cars for quite some time and it's now on this uh, 2021 gs range the other thing that i very much do like because if you've watched my channel you'll know that i'm very much about visibility and other people being able to see you and that is that the front and rear indicators are now also daylight running lights so without the indicators actually operating the front indicators have a rim of orange light around them and the rear indicators have a rim of red light around them which is obviously enhanced when you switch the indicator on so I like that idea anything that makes a motorcycle more visible to me is an advantage so that's definitely something that I would have liked to have got on my 2020 machine and I think is a, a valuable addition on the 2021 machine now this particular machine that I'm on has the heated seats now again if you watch my RT uh, review which had heated seats you'll know that I'm not a lover of heated seats full stop I didn't enjoy heated seats in a motor car I don't enjoy heated seats on a motorcycle now I must admit again I don't ride a motorcycle at minus 10 degrees so I bow to those that do that a heated seat is very very good I occasionally use my heated grips on my adventure so I think that's a worthwhile one but what I would however say is that as an option it's £295 and to me 
that's a worthwhile option even if it's only for the resale value because if you tried to buy those seats as aftermarket seats you would pay a thousand pounds for a rider and passenger heated seat for sure so at 295 British pounds I would say that I would probably have it as an option I just probably wouldn't use it now just to show you how, how that works they all work off what was the heated grip button still is the heated grip button so if I press that you'll notice on the TFT I now get grip heating and seat heating both on zero at the moment so effectively both off and I just use the whizzy wheel in the normal way pushing it to the right brings me into the grip heating in this case and then if I wind that it'll go through setting one setting two setting three setting four and setting five confirm it with an okay go backwards I've now got grip heating five so my uh, grips are on the high setting go to seat heating move that one across and exactly the same roll it through the five different settings to wherever you want it confirm it and then go backwards so I've now got the grip heating on five and the seat heating on five and you'll notice as well that the passenger seat has its own switch underneath its seat so that the passenger can actually please themselves whether they have that on high or low or off so that's how the passenger adjusts their uh, seat heating now one other thing that I noticed as soon as I got on this bike is that, again you'll know from some of my videos, that I've replaced the DIN socket on my machine with a USB connector from Nippy Normans and relocated my DIN socket to the side of the seat. Now I noticed that this now has a USB connection as standard. So if we look down there, I hope you can see it. If not, we'll do you a photograph. Um, but down there is a USB connection as opposed to the DIN connection. Now, the other thing that's really funny is, having come off the adventure and literally jumped straight on this, is just how small this bike feels against the adventure. Now, this is by no means a small bike. It's still quarter of a ton. Um, but certainly when you get on it, it almost appears that the handlebars are closer. It appears that the uh, seat is a little lower. This may be a lowered bike, I don't know, but the seat appears to be a little bit lower. My feet are much more on the ground. Of course, the one thing that you notice straight away is the overall width of the fuel tank, which is nowhere near as wide as the as the adventure and if I look down I can see the boxer engine here very clearly which if you do that on an adventure you can only see the very tip of the cam covers so um, there is much more weather protection the screen is much larger on the adventure against the GS and this one is in the upright position and you also have a bit of sort of side fairings on the adventure as well so I am noticing quite a little bit more wind noise um, and obviously that would result in less weather protection and the like but what I would say is and I loved my GS my my Bertha my original blue GS and that is that you do notice whilst it is still a heavy motorcycle it is much more nimble than the adventure and that's definitely something I noticed when I had it on tour and when you get that extra 10 litres of fuel in it is a little more difficult on S-Benz to be able to lift it up and push it down and lift it up it takes a lot more work to make the machine flickable than it does on this uh, GS so all in all a very accomplished motorcycle never had any complaints about my GS and this one is just as nice and has the extra couple of features the indicators for sure um, I think that's a that's a nice additional feature the USB socket is a nice additional feature the heated seats is a is an added value I'm not sure it's a nice feature but but it's probably something as I say I would have and not use just because it's only in inverted commas 295 pounds but um, the other thing that is different with this I'm pretty sure that the actual power and the torque are identical on this 1250 uh, 2021 boxer engine to the 2020 but it is now Euro 5 compliant I'm pretty sure uh, whereas the 
2020 models, my model effectively, are Euro 4 compliant. Now, how they've achieved that I don't know, or whether indeed my one was Euro 5 compliant, but they never went for that certification, I don't honestly know. The only way that I can think that they would be able to to change that without changing anything in the engine and the power is obviously by fueling. And the one thing I do notice with this one is um, it's a little more poppy when I come off the gas. It, it has a little bit of a pop, pop, pop to itself. But it does also, this particular one has the Akrapovic um, aftermarket exhaust on it, or at least the factory fitted um, Akrapovic uh, silencer. And that may well be the reason that it's popping. This machine comes with exactly the same tyres as mine. Um, there have, I think, been a bit of a pushback on some of the the more adventure-based tyres that BMW started to fit at the end of 2020. And so they're certainly this machine anyway is back on the uh, Bridgestone Battle Axe adventure. I think it's A41s, um, but don't quote me on that. But they're the same, exactly the same tyres as I've got on my 2020 GS Adventure. All in all, as you would expect, an incredibly accomplished bike. I'm not sure myself about the colourway. Um, it's a little bit too um, stark for my liking, but it's also available in a triple black and in the rally, what I call the standard male primary colours, red, white and blue, the rally uh, style. I think if it were me, the rally tends to be a bit too popular for my liking. It's, a, it's probably one of the more popular colours. I certainly wouldn't want this adventure, sorry, this um, anniversary colour. Uh, I would probably go for the triple black and having seen that in person in the showroom, it is a very nice bike. So there you have it, a very quick view from the cockpit, if you like. <laughs> um, just a quick rundown of what it's like if you're looking to, to try one or test ride one. You've now seen the view from the cockpit and uh, some of the main features of the new 2021 R1250 GS from BMW. Um, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps the channel. If you like any of my other videos then it might be worthwhile subscribing and pressing the notification bell so that you get notified when I release any new videos and if you've got any comments I really love the comments so um, fire those in I try to answer a hundred percent of them um, I do get rather a lot but I will continue to try and answer all of them good or bad so thanks a lot for watching and we'll pick you up next time ride safe and stay safe bye bye